The need to belong is relevant to modern society and indeed schooling, where we, we're developing healthy social connectedness is paramount. At school, students want to fit in, be accepted and find their place among their peers. Most children learn to fit in in socially acceptable ways. Yet, the few children who display highly inappropriate behaviours have, according to Adler and Drakers, learned a mistaken way of belonging. Adler and Drake has named this mistaken way of belonging the mistaken goals of behaviour, where a child sets out to achieve their goal of fitting in, but goes about it in unacceptable ways, using a misguided logic. The four mistaken goals are to gain undue attention through attention-seeking behaviour, to seek power, although misguided, to seek revenge, and to display inadequacy or helplessness. So take a moment to think about the students that you come across, whether you deal with them directly or observe them in class, and start thinking about whether that's ringing any bells. Drakus tells us that children's behaviour only makes sense when we understand the goal behind the behaviour. Now we'll do some activities together to explore the four goals. And on your worksheet is a table like this. And if you don't have access to it right now, quickly draw a similar chart on a piece of paper. And you can write in the boxes as we go along. You don't have to rush to do that right now. On the left, I have listed the four mistaken goals. For each mistaken goal, we will talk about the student's belief behind the behaviour, Identify the kind of behaviours you observe in the classroom that match the belief. Look at how to identify the behaviour by the feelings triggered by the behaviour and briefly discuss the responses that reinforce the mistaken belief. And lastly, identify some strategies to help students learn a more positive way to belong. The first mistaken goal we will talk about is attention seeking. It's okay to want attention, however, Drake has labelled excessive attention seeking that, that disrupts the social learning environment and distracts the teacher and other students from learning as maladaptive behaviour. For example, the classroom teacher is asking the students questions about the work they have just done and Nick continually interrupts by calling out the answer. This maladaptive behaviour stems from the student's mistaken belief that the way to belong is to be noticed and to keep the teacher busy with them. You may like to write the belief behind this behaviour in the second column on your worksheet. When we consider Nick's behaviour, his mistaken belief is that he will get noticed by calling out. So now it's your turn. What other attention-seeking behaviours have you observed in students? On your worksheet in the observed behaviour box, write as many attention-seeking behaviours as you can think of in one minute, and then choose one and copy it into the chat box to share. Right, thanks everybody. We have a lot of behaviours there. Class clown asking lots of questions calling the educator's name, being a class clown in an effort to elicit any sort of response from students and the teacher, laying on the desk, general calling out and interrupting. These are some of the other things you may have had. There was a calling out that we already looked at, clicking fingers, tapping the desk, clowning you said, showing off, making smart remarks, asking irrelevant questions, Wanting lots of approval, like notice me, notice me. Being overly nice is also attention seeking, as is being too eager to please. Notice that the last three behaviours are passive, yet there's still a way of getting undue attention. So how do you know what motivates the mistaken behaviour? Drake has noted that our gut reaction to a behaviour is usually a good indicator of the goal behind it. For example, if I was Nick's teacher, I would feel annoyed if he continually interrupted my lesson by calling out in class. So what I want you to do next is to think about 
the attention-seeking behaviors you listed and what feelings they trigger. And then write the feelings in the triggered by the behavior box on your worksheet. And just like before, choose one and copy it into the chat box to share. So just recapping, what you're doing is you're thinking about the behaviors you listed on your worksheet and how they make you feel. What, be, what feeling do those behaviors trigger in you? Write those feelings in the feelings triggered by the behavior box and then copy one into the chat box to share. Okay, so frustration is listed quite a few times. Annoyance, concern, irritation, anger, understanding and that there is that underlying need for approval, annoyance, frustration, wanting to go back from the child and give, some, give oneself some space, feeling loss of track, feeling that the teacher is being disrespected. Okay, so there's lots of different feelings there that you've listed, that's fantastic. So feeling annoyed or irritated are typical feelings triggered by students whose mistaken goal is to belong by being noticed. It is easy to fall into the trap of reinforcing the mistaken belief that a student only counts when being noticed. For example, the teacher is getting pretty annoyed with Nick as she keeps stopping the lesson to deal with the disruptions. However, Nick's teacher is reinforcing his goal for attention as every time Nick interrupts her lesson by calling out, she gives attention to his inappropriate behaviour. You see, it doesn't matter to Nick whether the teacher's attention is positive or not as long as he's being noticed. It is most likely Nick would also use other ways to gain attention, such as giving silly answers, clowning around or seeking the teacher's approval. Do you like that mess? Is that good enough? Is that nice? So I think by now you're building up a picture of the behaviours, the feelings, and how you can unintentionally reinforce that mistaken belief even by continually correcting the behaviour. Here are four strategies you can use to help students learn positive ways to gain attention. Set clear expectations. Our rule for group work is hands up. This way everyone gets a chance to speak and listen to each other. Encourage students who follow the rule. For example, thanks for putting your hand up or I appreciate your patience. Tactically ignore the behaviour, which means you are aware of it, but you choose not to pay attention to it and instead pay attention to the students putting up their hand or following other rules for cooperation. And lastly, use positive correction strategies such as rule reminders or when and then. Our rule during discussion time is hands up. When you put your hand up, then you may speak. Of course, this is not the whole picture and today I'm only giving you an overview of what to do, but it's very important that to distinguish between reinforcing the mistaken goal and knowing how to direct students to more positive ways.